Hey everybody, so unfortunately there is a press conference that I am going to share with you guys. Um, before I go away, I want to upload it for y'all because we all have been following this case. Unfortunately, they believe that Noel Rodriguez Alvarez is deceased. Um, so I will play this for you. There's terrible things that his mom has stated to people that he was possessed and things like that and she didn't feed him properly and she wanted to like make false statements so that she could get benefits from him so he's basically there for money for her so i'm going to share this with you guys it is devastating you guys hear me okay Good. Well, good afternoon. I have several very important updates to share with you on this investigation. I'm incredibly saddened to share with you today that the search for Noel Rodriguez Alvarez is now officially a death investigation. That means Noel will no longer be considered an endangered missing person. Based on the totality of the circumstances, along with the evidence available to us at this time, it has led to a very unfortunate, unimaginable, and devastating conclusion that Noel is likely deceased. As we continue to investigate the disappearance of Noel, one of our top priorities was to determine the accurate timeline. Investigators determined that Noel was last seen by a professional on July 21st, 2022 for speech therapy. Several other professional appointments were missed near this timeline and following which ultimately led to warning letters from the Texas Department of State Health Services in order for Cindy to continue to receive government benefits for Noel. Investigators learned that near this timeline, Cindy even asked an acquaintance of hers if she could borrow her son for a doctor's appointment so that she could keep the benefits, stating that Noel had COVID. Our investigation revealed that Noel was present at the time Cindy gave birth to her twin daughters in early October of 2022. Noel was later witnessed for a short period of time following the discharge of the twins from the hospital in mid-October. Noel was described as appearing unhealthy and malnourished. Investigators learned through interviews that leading up to the birth of the twins, Cindy had made several statements about Noel, referring to him as evil possessed or having a demon in him. Cindy believed that Noel was going to harm the newborn twins. On November 1st, 2022, Cindy obtained passport photographs of all the children living with her, except for Noel. On November 2nd, Cindy applied for passports for herself and all six of the children, except for Noel. Interviews suggested that Cindy began trying to explain the disappearance of Noel in early November through various stories that she told. Cindy had reportedly told stories that Noel was with his biological father in Mexico, or Noel was with his aunt in Mexico, or Noel was sold to another woman in a Fiesta Market parking lot. Thanks to technology, interviews, search warrants, and the assistance of authorities in Mexico, Investigators have been able to disprove each one of these stories. Throughout the investigation, we learned that Cindy has been known by relatives to be abusive and neglectful to Noel. Relatives and witnesses stated that food and water were often withheld from Noel because Cindy did not like changing Noel's dirty diapers. A relative even witnessed Cindy strike Noel in the face with keys because he drank water. Investigators have worked and continue to work tirelessly to comb through all of the electronic data and other information that has been obtained through a multitude of search warrants. We have not located any information that would suggest Noel has been sold or trafficked. We have additionally been able to disprove stories that Noel was given to other family members. Although the course of this investigation has changed, our commitment to Noel has not. We will continue to fight for Noel. 
Investigators are now working towards identifying potential locations and conducting recovery operations. We are engaging with several experts and highly qualified organizations to assist us on this venture. Some organized searches have already begun and are expected to continue in the coming days. Nobody is more committed, more determined, or more eager to locate Noel than this investigative team. We currently have active felony warrants for the arrest of Cindy and Arshdeep for abandoning and endangering a child, which is a second degree felony. We want these fugitives arrested and extradited back to the United States so that we can seek answers for the disappearance of Noel. Lastly, I want to again acknowledge and thank all of those who have assisted us to this point, and it is an exhaustive list of, of great organizations and people. That includes the Alliance for Children, the Department of Family and Protective Services CPI Division, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the Euless Police Department, Grapevine Police, Colleyville Police, White Settlement, Forest Hill Police, North Richland Hills Police, Mansfield Police, Dallas Police, the Tarrant County Sheriff's Office, the Texas Department of Public Safety, the Texas Rangers, all of our federal partners, and our law enforcement counterparts in Mexico. Furthermore, I want to specifically thank Captain Zachary of the Euless Police Department, as well as Captain Shimmick of the Grapevine Police Department. These commanders have overseen operations associated with this investigation, and I am tremendously grateful for their leadership, dedication, and commitment in locating Noel Rodriguez Alvarez. These agencies and officers, along with my investigative staff, have been working tirelessly on this case. Thousands of man hours have been put into the search for Noel. The commitment that has been exhibited by all of them is second to none, and I could not be more proud and thankful for all of them. I understand that this is not the news that we were all hoping for or praying for, and we must continue to stand together as a community and fight for Noel. The city of Everman will be holding a candlelight vigil for Noel Rodriguez Alvarez on Monday, April the 10th at 8.30 p.m. at our Everman Civic Center. This is obviously an ongoing criminal investigation, so I'm going to be limited in the responses that I can give, but I'm happy to take any questions that you might have at this time. And I'll be sure, I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to take my time with your questions, so don't, don't, you don't have to pounce all over each other. We'll be okay. I'm telling you today that based off the interviews, the facts and the statements that we've received, a culmination of all of the circumstantial evidence and the fact that we've ruled out other possibilities that yes, I do believe that Noel is deceased. So the death investigation is completely separate from the, the already existing warrants that we issued last week. Uh, those warrants that were issued last week were completely unrelated to this for abandoning or endangering a child. It is a second degree felony in the state of Texas, and we are seeking to extradite on those charges, charges if we can make that happen. Chief, you mentioned you're going to be searching some locations. Has that already started, and are those all locations kind of in this general area, or is there some sense of scope for you? Yeah, so investigators are still working to, to determine the exact locations where we'll continue to search. Um, right now, we believe that those are all within the general area of North Texas. I mean, they're, they're in the vicinity here. Um, and those searches have been in the general area of the, of the residents there. So we, we will continue to identify those locations. I don't have any of those specifically listed out here yet, but they are working to identify those and, and we'll move forward with the teams necessary to conduct those searches. The absolute last known appearance that we have been given was that, that Noel was seen um, at the hospital at the birth of the twins in, in early October and possibly up to a week after that, once the, or a week after the, the children were discharged and brought home. So we're looking at mid to late October in that timeline. Did you have video from the hospital that showed Noel there? No, we don't have video. We've been able to verify that through interviews. Yeah, it said something about um, <clears throat> trying to get federal authorities to contact um, international governments. How is that coming along? Yeah, so we're working with our federal partners. I mean, they're, they're engaged with us now, and we are working with them. They're on the case, working side by side. So um, are you, I'm assuming that's who you're referring have to. Have you any with any international governments? 
as far as their context and what they're doing, I have no clue. I mean, we, we rely on our relationship with them. When they have information to share back with us, they'll obviously communicate that with us. But I know they're working on it. I just have not heard what the status of that is yet. Steve, on that topic, if there is a body file, if there's a murder warrant that was issued at some point in time, does that make it easier for federal authorities to go out and locate these family members? You know, I, I, I don't know what all it entails and as far as look. I've never had to go after somebody in a foreign country before. I mean, this is obviously new territory for me, so I'm just not experienced in that. Um, so I don't know what all that entails. I don't know what will make it easier. Um, but, you know, obviously I, I would think the more evidence that, that is there, the more uh, probably the more plausible argument that they can make in order to fulfill an extradition. But I don't know what those conversations look like. I've never been a part of it. I've never had to pursue somebody in a foreign country before. So. Steve, right now, do you believe that Cindy You know, we don't have all the answers there, um, and, and that's that's where bringing them back and, and being able to interview the other parties involved and getting to those answers would, would be very helpful. I don't have all the answers there yet, and we're working towards finding those answers. Yes, we do believe the family is still in India. Yes. You said something about the locations. Are those locations around Evergreen or? Yeah, the primary locations that have been searched thus far have been around Evergreen, yes. Right now, Steve, what do you need from the public? We still need tips. I mean, the, the, we can't tell you how, how helpful some of the tips that we have gotten have been on this case. And, and we still need that information. Um, we we want to know anything and everything we can about Noel. So anybody with information, anybody who's seen them, um, anybody who's had conversations with Cindy about Noel, we, we want to know that information. And it's it's absolutely crucial that they they share that with us so we can continue our investigation. As a chief at the end of your work day, when you go home, what's going through your mind without the answer? Like, what is it that you have? Yeah, so this is this is by far, and I think I speak for the whole team, this has probably been one of the, the hardest cases that, that, well, I know it's the hardest case that I've ever been a part of. Um, and I'm sure that's the case for many of the other investigators that have been on this on this uh, investigation. Um, and it's it's something it's that, that we even communicate late at night, even when we're supposedly done working on the case for the day. We're even thinking of things and, and, and messaging back and forth and sharing new ideas and things to go after. So you can tell that all the investigators on this case have, have really been committed, um, including myself. And, and it's, it's something that, uh, that we're absolutely committed to, to pursuing and finding answers to. So I guess, I guess the short answer to that is really the days don't end at this point and haven't. We continue to, to work on this. Any other questions? Can you, can you share something about Noel's father? Yeah, so I, I, you know, we've we've had those conversations. We've turned that request over. Um, I don't know what the status is. I know that the authorities in Mexico have been absolutely tremendous uh, in working with us on this case and very, very helpful with us. Um, and so I think at this point, I, I don't think there's any expectation that the father will come over here to visit with us. Uh, I think we'll continue the, the conversation through the authorities in Mexico, and that's been very helpful in the case. Um, I know you asked, you asked what's what. What's next is, is continuing, uh, investigators are gonna continue to pinpoint potential locations and, and organize these searches and see if we can't find Noel and bring him home. That's our goal. Anything else? All right, so if you guys could please, you know, hit the like button, comment below, let's keep his name in the algorithm until he is found and I will keep you guys updated as much as possible on his case until he is found and mom and stepdad are arrested. Thank you all for watching and please have a happy Easter. I love you all. Have a great day.